So if you guys haven't heard the Scotty story yet, I'm pleased and very happy to, to tell it to you today. So forward-looking statement. And who are we? So I'm Thomas Mumford. I'm the VPX for Scotty Resources. Uh, I've been doing exploration for the past 12 years all across Canada. Prior to this, I was the program head for the mining engineering program at BCIT. And then during the summers, I would go and work for consulting companies uh, doing exploration on grassroots to brownfields exploration programs all across Canada. At the helm, we've got Brad Rourke, um, corporate finance executive. His last big deal was in the oil sands with Athabasca Oil, where it was the Canada's second largest IPO. He put that together. We also have Ernie Mast. He was the president and CEO of Cobra Panama, or Minima Panama, who put Cobra Panama together, as well as Primero. And then we've got John Williamson, formerly uh, executive management with Kamenak, and then Discover Ca uh, Committee Bay as well. Our share structure, we are 77 million issued and outstanding, fully diluted, we're at about 97 million. And right now our market cap sits at 10.3 million. We are very attractive in terms of that when you start looking at our neighbors. So looking at our neighbors, we are here in blue. Our neighbors are Predium, who owns the Bruce Jack mine. That's a $3 billion company. We have Ascot with the Premier mine. That's a $120 million company. Those are situated right next to our flagship property, the Scotty Gold Mine. The Scotty Gold Mine itself operated in the early 80s, from 1981 to 1985. Shut down, not due to the geology, but due to the simple economics at the time. It was producing about a half an ounce per ton, produced 95,000 ounces. But when gold went from 800 down to 300, and they had a $20 million loan at 20% interest, they just couldn't stay afloat. And the mine got shuttled off to the Royal Bank of Canada for a number of years and then kind of bounced along between a few uh, explorers that really didn't do much. It had a reasonable kick at the can back in 2005, 2004, where they drilled some of the extensions of the vein, just trying to progress it enough that they could go back in the, in the mine, but they had a historic resource on it that they were following up on. We have a significant resource upside on the property, the mine itself, uh, as well as the surrounding land package, which I'll talk about in a little bit. We have some drill results coming out, and we've ad advanced the surface, um, surface showings that we found this summer, and that's where our real potential lies for this company at this point. We also have existing tailings on site that have an economic potential to them, which I won't have time in this discussion, but after this, if you'd like to discuss that, I, I would be happy to. If you look at Scotty itself, this is what it looks like, pretty rugged terrain, it's up in the Golden Triangle, but we are road accessible. You drive past the Premier Mine on the way to the uh, Grand Duke Mill, and you'll pass the Scotty Gold Mine, and you can drive right to site. The Scotty Gold Mine itself is an underground mine. The mill was put in underground so that they got operated under, uh, year round, as well as the power station. So going right into that mountain where you see those four yellow triangles there, over here, that's where the mine itself exists, goes in the, there, and we've, we're mining a series of pyrite puritite rich veins there with high grade mineralization. Minimum mining width and grade when they were actually producing was about you know, 10 grams a ton was the cutoff, and minimum mining width was about three and a half feet. Since then, a few things have changed. One, glaciers have pulled back massively in that area. You can see the outline there of where the glacier used to outline, and that's pulled back. Also, this whole lake bed here used to be filled with water. Down this way is the Salmon Glacier, the largest glacier in North America that you can actually drive to, and that's retreated so much that the lake actually <coughs> let go in a catastrophic yakulop, which is a, a basically an Icelandic term for a catastrophic flow of the water out of there. And what that's opened, opened up for us is two things. One, now the tailings are exposed at surface. They were deposited in the lake when they first dropped in. The other is now that we can actually drill on the lake bed floor. So any structures that we had going out of the the Scotty Gold Mine that they couldn't drill before because it went into the lake, those are now accessible to us. If we look at some of the gold intercepts from the actual production of the mine, on the left here we have the M zone, which is where 90% of the gold was produced from Scotty. The greens are all the, the mineral workings, and you see intercepts here of 3.38 meters of 108 grams, 4.64 meters of 38.64 grams, and then we have intercepts over here and the other zones of 3.23 of 21.75 grams. And we see a lot of these intercepts in various zones throughout the mine. 
So these zones are all stacked parallel to each other, and I'll show that in an upcoming slide. When we first acquired the project, I came into it last year. I was working with Equity Exploration. We came in and reassessed the entire project. We looked at all the old reports, all the old structures, and reinterpreted what was going on there. And we came up with a few new theories about how these veins are situated and organized together and see if we could step outside of that. Realistically, when they came into this deposit, they found the vein at surface and started mining it down from there. They never really did the step of property scale exploration. They didn't really step outside that one vein. They were making money and they were going down until the economics didn't make sense, but they never stepped outside to see how big this thing could actually be. And that's where we took, it, uh, took, took the potential of it and that's where we're going. If you look at a cross section through these veins, this would be the M zone here, these would be the, the workings here, and that's where the main production of the vein system was. We also have parallel structures through here that have already been identified and drilled off in that historic resource. But they, there's a lot of potential for other parallel structures, both down and across through the zone, and along strike as well. But our real story changed in April this year when we acquired a massive piece of land from the Australian that Greg was uh, discussing. This surrounds our actual existing old mine. The old mine actually sat on a Crown Grant package of just 400 hectares, and we've acquired a massive land patch that surrounds that completely, uh, over 4,000 hectares. And this has a lot of potential for the same mineralization style that we see at Scotty. This property was held privately for that entire period of time and was largely looked at independently of the Scotty gold mine. And most of the assessment work done on it wasn't people on the grounds taking samples, it was just flying airborne mag surveys over and over on top of the ground. So they didn't really look at the rocks. The rat last real look at it was in 1990 and they had favorable results. But since then we've had huge amounts of glacial retreat and that's where we saw the major opportunity in this area because the area is uh, heavily glaciated. But the project has never seen a proper drill turn on it. So this summer when we went out, this is the land package. So this is the old Scotty gold mine claims here. And then this in light blue is what we acquired. Greg alluded to uh, an EM survey that we acquired from Ron Netolitsky. And those are those hash marks here. So those were all untested drill targets available on surface. We also see that same drill target occurs at Scotty and another few zones on our other existing claims, and those are very coincident with the same pyrotite pyrite rich mineralization. So we know that that EM survey actually targets mineralization, and so that was our first pass this summer, was looking at those EM targets. And then after that, we went back out and we started looking at the glacial retreat around those areas. On Thursday, we put out our first assay results from the first one of these zones that we identified. We identified it as a 30 meter long, four meter wide massive sulfide lens in the field this summer, right near the edge of a glacier. And we started mapping around that and taking samples around that edge and we turned some amazing numbers. So down here we have a sample that was 536 grams per ton at surface grab sample. And then we also took a chip sample across here, which was 5.3 meters grading 10 and a half grams. And the two highest samples in that chip sample were actually at the edges of it. We didn't get the entire chip sample and we'll have to go back next year to actually extend that zone to see how big it is. If we're looking at this, chip sample was up here, 536 gram sample was down here, massive sulfide lenses here. We have samples all along that, that trend that's over 700 meters in length and over up to 200 meters width with discrete zones with very high grade mineralization. If we go back up over the other side of this mountain, which I'll show you in the next slide, we actually get over to Scotty Gold Mine itself. So what we were just looking at is over here. This is, on, this is a ridge, basically north-south on this section, and the Scotty Gold Mine is here with an east-west structure dominating it. So 1.9 kilometers away on strike of our existing system, we found these high-grade structures that are largely on strike with the actual Scotty Gold Mine of a very similar mineralized style. We are very excited to get back out in the ground do some more superficial work, and we'll drill test this next year. This will be our first uh, drilling in, in the new year. In the fall, I got the call from Brad in late August, basically. Now we're going to put a drill program together in the last minute. And I said, really? And he said, yeah. And so we managed to wrangle together a 2,000 meter drill program. Got kicking probably early, mid-September and we were able to drill 2,000 meters before the snow ultimately buried the drill and we had to use a dozer to push it out. 
but we were we put 20 holes in. We had, didn't have claim we didn't have a drill permit on those new claims that I was showing you, so we we were only able to drill the the claims that we had. And there was three primary veins that were, had already seen some drilling on them, so we followed up that drilling with those. So high grade targets uh, on the Ben vein, the Blueberry vein, and then we put a long deep hole into the Scotty Gold mine because of those that parallel structure of those veins. We were able to do a, a drill hole from surface and hit intersect multiple targets on the way down. All those drill holes went to the lab in mid-October. We're looking for the results to come back to us early to mid-December, and then we'll have those out in early January this year. We also have a major claim package just to the east of Stewart. Stewart's down here. Ascot with the IDM. Uh, Ascot who bought IDM. So this is the Red Mountain project would be just over here on this property. Um, it's a little bit different than the Scotty Gold Mine. We're dealing with polymetallic veins high grade, a lot of silver, a lot of lead and zinc in those projects. There was two major or two small past producers located on the Cambria projects and we're advancing this as, at the same time. Future work, we're looking to do an aggressive drill program next year both on the Scotty Gold Mine itself as well as all these satellite targets that we're seeing out in the Summit Lake project. We'd like to refly a new modern EM survey to further delineate the EM targets that we see in the area. And then we'd like to do IP over top of some of the targets that we have to see if we can look beneath the ice in some of these glaciated zones. Um, detailed surficial sampling and mapping on the, the newly identified massive sulfide targets on the Summit Lake. And then we're looking at doing a drill survey to upgrade our mineral, our historic resource on the Scotty Gold Mine to be compliant with the CIM standards. Just to, to recap, we are 100% owners of the Scotty Gold Mine, a past producing uh, gold mine up in the southern portion of the Golden Triangle. We are on a road and we have the Predium power line going right through our property. We have a significant amount of resource upside both in the Scotty Gold Mine due to our reinterpretation, but we also have additional targets that extend outside of the zone that have never really been looked at. And we have a, a positive upcoming news flow coming over the next couple of months, releases from all the superficial data that we've been collecting during the summer, as well as the drill results in early January. So please watch us, and if you have any questions for me, I'll be going right after this to, uh, to a smaller room that I'll answer anything you have to ask. Perfect. Thanks for listening, everyone.